March of 2021, Reddit users found that the website was censoring various articles that were being posted to its political boards. The articles in question only gave passing reference to one Amy Chaloner, one of the most controversial trans activists in the United Kingdom. It transpired that Chaloner had recently become an administrator on the website and a bot had been set up to censor any and all negative discussion on her, claiming it to be tantamount to doxing, with some users even being banned just for sharing public information. The automated censorship on Reddit started a Streisand effect, exposing the wider world to Amy Chaloner and the various controversies she's been directly involved in. Despite her young age, Chaloner has found herself in multiple high-profile roles, with almost all coming to an unceremonious end. But who exactly is Amy Chaloner? Why is she so controversial? And, most importantly, how are Chaloner's antics a reflection of how one can weaponize their identity politically to escape responsibility time and time again? Amy Chaloner was born on the 1st of October 1997 to David and Tina Chaloner. Her parents first met in 1993, after finding each other through CB radio, and after meeting at a cafe for the first time, they moved in together just 36 hours later. Amy was the first of the Chaloner children to be born, although Tina had two children of her own from a previous relationship. The next two Chaloner children appeared to be named in alphabetical order. Not much is known about Chaloner's earliest years, but around 2011, between the ages of 14 and 15, Chaloner came out online as a diaper fur. That is, a furry who gets sexual kicks out of wearing diapers and defecating in them. Yeah, things really cranked up to 11 real quick here, didn't they? Chaloner's fursona, as it's called, went by the name Mucky Meerkat, an autistic male meerkat who wore diapers. A commissioned art piece of Mucky lists his hobbies as My Little Pony and Colouring In, although it's also mentioned that it's acceptable to sissify the fursona. Please, please don't Google what that means. Mucky Meerkat would regularly post on Twitter and other websites about his defecation fetish, and would gain the attention of older users online. A profile on the furry fetish website Fur Affinity also showed that Chaloner considered herself to be close to two particular trans furries, named Runt and Maddie Wolf, both of whom identified as adult babies. Chaloner would go through multiple fursonas in her teenage years, changing from Mucky Meerkat to Cassie Lovecraft, and at one point publicly distancing herself from the furry fandom only to go and create two more fursonas afterwards. In 2013, Chaloner decided that being a fairy who enjoys soiling herself wasn't enough, and so she became an online vigilante by joining Anonymous. With the group, she joined in a protest against the Birmingham Bullring Shopping Centre, claiming the owners to be tax dodgers. The protest became heated, and following this, it was alleged that Chaloner issued a threat against the Bullring owners to take the website down in a cyber attack. Chaloner was arrested for the threat, but the charges were eventually dropped. Speaking about the matter to Coventry Live in 2017, Chaloner claimed the police involvement was an overreaction and that she would do it again. It was not long after this, however, that Chaloner was separated from her parents and put into care, but exactly for how long isn't entirely clear. It was around 2014 that Chaloner, looking for further identities to add to her growing collection, came out as a trans woman. She attended a high school ball wearing a dress and high heels. She claimed this was initially banned by the head teacher, but following pressure from her parents, the school eventually allowed her to attend, with teachers helping her to apply makeup. Chaloner claims that her medical transition through the NHS hit a stumbling block after her GP wanted to look into her autism. Chaloner was concerned that her autism diagnosis might affect her transition, although in a statement on the matter, NHS England implied that such a referral would only be to assist the person transitioning. Chaloner's autism was eventually referenced by a general specialist in a report, which he claimed was unnecessary. During the early days of her transition, Chaloner launched her own website, Transfer, dedicated to trans furries, although the limited posts on her site only focused on trans issues. The last post featured was on a hometown of Coventry having its first Pride Parade. In late 2014, Chaloner got involved with Stonewall, 
a UK LGBT charity which, at the time, focused exclusively with lesbian, gay and bisexual issues. She stayed over at a Stonewall organised retreat, and in 2015 she received a certificate from the then CEO Ruth Hunt for her work on the Stonewall Youth Volunteering Programme at the Stonewall Youth Awards, where she got to meet Gok Wan. Despite her young age, Chaloner saw herself as a rising star in the queer activism scene, and after joining and campaigning for the left-wing environmentalist Green Party in 2014, Chaloner seemed destined for a life in politics. It's this path that would come to define her, but not in the way she intended. On the 29th of March 2014, same-sex marriage was legalised in the UK. Stonewall, the largest gay rights charity in the UK, found itself in an existential crisis. With gay marriage legalised and homophobic attacks treated more seriously due to hate crime legislation, many LGB people may have wondered why the fight was still going on, and how organisations like Stonewall can still justify their existence to their finances. Now, Stonewall wasn't the only organisation in this predicament, as many LGBT groups at the time focused only on sexuality issues. But the answer to their troubles came in 2015, when, after meeting with prominent British trans activists, Stonewall decided to fully embrace trans activism, making it the keystone of their campaigns from that point onwards. To better organise this, Stonewall made the decision to run a trans advisory board, which would allow the biggest names in trans activism the chance to dictate Stonewall's future. At this time, Amy Chaloner had worked her way up to becoming the chair of the Green Party's LGBTIQA Plus committee, although it's unclear just how intense the competition would be for such a role. Regardless, Chaloner was gaining clout within the queer community, and so it came as no surprise to see that by 2016 she had joined Stonewall's Trans Advisory Board, alongside such big names as bearded lesbian Alex Drummond, transvestite John Lucy Moore, and a guy named Jed. Chaloner's Stonewall appointment wasn't the only new position she found herself in. She was the co-founder of the Global Greens LGBT Plus Network, got involved with Coventry Pride alongside her father, and was the trans representative of the Open University's LGBT Committee. She also started to write blogs for the Huffington Post, the first of which centred on toilet access and that she had more than 400 accounts blocked on Twitter. At the end of 2016, Chaloner's activism had its first real-world impact outside of left-wing echo chambers. During a phone call with Transport for London's Oyster Card phone line, Chaloner was allegedly told she didn't sound like a miss. For those curious, this is what Amy Chaloner sounds like. So it's about being more inclusive. London is a, an amazingly diverse city and approximately over 5 million uh, commuters on London's transport network are probably outside for normal gender binary. And so it's about making an open step for them to feel more included on our London system. And as, a, as an individual myself, it's just getting rid of an outdated term so that commuters can get information they need more easily. Chaloner claimed to be in shock following the comment, but rather than take the message that she doesn't sound like a woman, Chaloner instead went to the press to put pressure on London Mayor Sadiq Khan, and following an outcry from trans activists, Khan made the decision to pull ladies and gentlemen announcements from trains and buses in favour of more gender neutral terms. In 2017, Chaloner would continue to grow her influential reach by writing for publications including The Independent and The Guardian and in June of that year, she was invited to speak to the Oxford Union at a debate in support of universities being a safe space. Her opponents were the veteran gay rights activist Peter Tatchell and based journalist Peter Hitchens. To allow safe spaces to, is to encourage a diversity of perspectives. Because certain comments aren't allowed, it's argued, you'll only receive one viewpoint. Yet the opposite is true. Making a safe space for oppressed groups to come and be comfortable enough to contribute to discussion and debate means that the issues that matter to everyone can be debated from a wider perspective. Shockingly, Chaloner's side lost the debate by 33 to 267. Also in 2017, Chaloner and her father took out a private injunction against a Green Party activist, Andy Healy, to prevent him from speaking out against transgender self-ID at a party conference. 
Chaloner reported Healy to the police after he misgendered her over Twitter, but no action was taken. Chaloner also stood for the Green Party in several elections. This includes the Coventry City Council in 2016 and 2018, which she lost, and she also stood as a candidate in the 2017 general election in the Coventry South constituency, where she got 604 votes, a drop of 2.2% of the vote from the previous election. Despite these losses, Chaloner was more determined than ever to make her mark in national politics, but in 2018, this would come crashing down. In 2018, the position of deputy leader for the Green Party came up for election. Chaloner, still a rising star in trans and left-wing activism, saw this as the perfect opportunity to boost her profile. To help with the campaign work, she hired her father, David Chaloner, to be her campaign manager. This was the beginning of a series of unfortunate events which had come to define Chaloner's political career. So, who is David Chaloner? David Chaloner was a Green Party and trans rights activist who was heavily involved with the local scouts. It is there that he adopted the name Baloo, a scout leader title based on the character from the Jungle Book. David would use this identity outside of scouts, frequently dressing up as the bear and even going by that name as part of Amy's deputy leadership campaign. But unbeknownst to the outside world, the Chaloner family hid a dark secret. Prior to being made Amy's campaign manager, David Chaloner abducted a 10-year-old girl and locked her in his attic, which he had converted into a BDSM sex dungeon. There, he proceeded to dress as a stereotypical little girl, complete with diapers, and called himself Lucy. David proceeded to torture the child by tying her to a beam, whipping and electrocuting her, and would then sexually assault her. He would also take photographs of himself abusing the child. David was arrested in 2015, at a time Amy claims to just be coming out of care. When initially questioned by the police, David accused the child of lying, as did his wife, but after a police search of the property, they found various sex toys and found the attic's layout was just as the girl described. The photographs were also uncovered, although David denied taking them, and images of child rape were discovered on his computer. In 2016, Amy notified the Green Party about her father's arrest and that the charges were sexual in nature, but she neglected to mention that her father was a member of the party or his involvement in her numerous political campaigns. Despite this, Amy has maintained she was unaware that the offences involved children, and she says she never questioned her family as to what was going on. David took an active role in Amy's campaign for the deputy leader of the Green Party, as he had for her previous political campaigns at one point even joining Amy in a podcast interview where he is given a star billing. An 11 week long trial took place against David for his crimes, with his wife Tina, who had previously called the victim a lying bitch, attempting to give legitimate excuses for the various items in David's sex dungeon. These, however, were inconsistent with the explanation David had given. In August of 2018, David Chaloner was found guilty of the abduction, torture and rape of a young girl, and was sentenced to 22 years in prison by Warwick Crown Court, 19 for the child rape, with a consecutive three-year term for the images of child abuse. He was also placed on the sex offenders register for life. Just a few days after the sentencing of her father, Amy Chaloner dropped out of the race for the Green Party's deputy leadership. In a statement issued on her own blog, Chaloner condemned her father's actions, but attempted to deflect any criticism aimed at her for hiring her father in the first place, saying, I cannot be held responsible for the actions of my father. I am not to blame for his behaviour. Yes, he was my election agent. This was one of a number of ways I was seeking to reconcile my relationship with my father after coming out of care. On reflection, I can understand that it was unacceptable for me to appoint my dad as my election agent when he had been arrested. I can now understand the potential risks for that decision. For that, I am sorry. She also bought up her transition, which she claimed people were linking to her father's actions. At the end of August 2018, the Green Party announced an inquiry into how David Chaloner was allowed to be Amy's campaign manager, considering the charges he faced. They also took action against Chaloner herself, suspending her until their investigation had been completed. The decision to do this was criticised by trans activists and Green Party women, who believed Chaloner was the victim of a smear campaign by gender-critical feminists. 
A week after being suspended, Chaloner announced she had quit the Green Party, claiming the party to be institutionally transphobic. She singled out Caroline Lucas, the Green Party's leader, despite Lucas writing an article for The Guardian in support of Chaloner just days earlier. The suspicious timing of Chaloner accusing her own party of transphobia only after she was suspended didn't go unnoticed, and she was called out on it during a radio interview. With Chaloner's unceremonious exit from the Green Party making tabloid headlines, one would assume she might intend to step out of the spotlight until the dust had settled. But in a move of stunning gormlessness, by the end of September 2018, Chaloner announced she had joined the Liberal Democrats, a centre-left party which at the time was focused almost exclusively on overturning the Brexit referendum. Despite the controversy surrounding her, Chaloner was welcomed with open arms, and months later the activist's fear appeared to memory hole how she allowed her paedophile father to run as a campaign manager. She is now being interviewed for various publications as a leading trans rights activist, and kept her positions with charities such as Stonewall and a Coventry-based LGBT youth group called PRISM. The report on David Chaloner's involvement with the Green Party, and how Amy failed to disclose key information, was released in early January 2019. The report questioned Amy's actions, particularly how she apparently never asked her family about her father's charges, why she never made the Green Party aware of her father's membership, and that she wasn't aware she might be putting her own reputation at risk by hiring her father, and even didn't understand why this might make her look bad. Chaloner considered herself vindicated by the release of the report. Despite the scandal and her severe failings, the British progressive left continued to treat her as a true pillar of the trans community and surely she would learn from her mistakes and not damage her political future by associating with a paedophile again, right? Nathaniel Knight is Amy's current husband. The pair likely met online and appear to be in a polyamorous relationship with another trans woman named Katrina Swales, who also goes by the name Nikosuke. Swales has similar interests to Amy, such as being a furry and soiling herself for sexual pleasure, and is just a part of a wider community of adult babies that Chaloner is associated with, including Fifas, who originally went by the name Runt. In the midst of all this madness, Knight wouldn't exactly stand out in the sea of degeneracy, but in the July of 2019, Knight made a series of disturbing tweets where he listed some of his own sexual desires. This included forced hypnosis, but quickly escalated a few minutes later. He claimed, Back to fantasising. Yes, I fantasise about things I don't want to do in real life. I fantasise about things that are some combination of impossible, unethical or otherwise outside of my personal capacity to act upon outside of fantasy. I fantasise about jumping 20 feet high and I don't think that means I can or that it would be safe to do so. I fantasise about children having sex. Sometimes with adults. Sometimes with other children. Sometimes kidnapped and forced into bad situations. Sometimes coerced through fantasy mind control. I don't fantasise about real children, even if I fantasise myself with a fictional child. It's a fantasy, like a child who pretends to be a dragon while their friend is a dragon slaying knight, or a robber while their friend pretends to be a police. It's make-believe and imaginary. In another post directly after he talked about fantasising over children, he mentioned how his girlfriend works with vulnerable teenagers. It didn't take long for the tweets to be found by people outside of Knight's circle, and several hours after the tweets started being shared around, they were deleted. Chaloner would go on to claim that Knight's Twitter account was hacked, and that the posts weren't made by him, but users on Kiwi Farms were able to look into Knight's online history, and found several posts made by him on a website called Digital Arts Domain. In one post dated the 16th of August 2004, Knight wrote, I can probably trace almost all of my fetishes back into my own childhood. Let's see, early exposure to sexual situations led to an interest in the immature female body, which led to my paedophilia. Another post made a year earlier featured Knight's own private information, effectively doxing himself as a paedophile to the whole internet. The discovery of Knight's Twitter thread would throw Chaloner into yet another political scandal, just one year after her father was jailed for paedophilia himself. The controversy led to her being suspended from the Liberal Democrats, where she had previously been given the role of diversity officer and had sat on their Coventry Executive Committee. Following her suspension, Chaloner announced she wouldn't campaign for the Liberal Democrats in the 2019 general election, but didn't provide any further explanation on this. 
Prism also faced questions about Chaloner's involvement with them, although the charity issued a statement saying she had passed all background checks and that her partner hadn't been to any of their meetings. It was also around this time that Chaloner decided to step away from Stonewall. Conveniently for Chaloner, after having a British political career tarnished by her close association to paedophiles, she was planning to move to the United States to live with Knight, who she married in December 2019. She also attempted to get her foot in the door of US politics by signing up as a volunteer for Elizabeth Warren's presidential campaign, but eventually backed Joe Biden when he became the nominee. Despite her young age, Chaloner had a number of eventful years under her large belt, and so the COVID pandemic provided what must have been a much needed quiet year in 2020. But by December 2020, Chaloner announced her latest position of power, that of a Reddit administrator. Chaloner had been active on Reddit for a number of years, being a moderator on many boards with young users. Katrina Swales, her trans furry adult baby lover, was also a Reddit moderator. In a Discord post on the 4th of December 2020, Chaloner made her announcement to the users of the Reddit Public Access Network, telling them she won't be around as much, but they'll continue to see great things into next year and far into the future. In hindsight, this feels oddly prophetic. This brings us back to March of 2021, only in the last few weeks at the time of recording. Users of r slash UK politics noticed that certain news articles being shared from the spectator were being deleted, and users were being banned for posting them, which even included a moderator at the board. In response, the moderators of UK politics made the board private, and issued a statement alerting their users that posts discussing a certain Reddit administrator were being censored. Of course, that administrator turned out to be Amy Challoner. The articles in question included The Green Party's Women Problem by Julie Bindle and Amy Challoner and the Danger of Transgender Politics by Melanie McDonough. Bindle's article in particular only mentioned Challoner in passing, but that was enough for action to be taken. Other boards followed suit in privating themselves in protest against Challoner, including popular boards for music, history and Pokemon Go. It transpired that an automated bot was set up by Reddit after Chaloner felt she was being harassed on the site, which would block any posts and ban any users just for mentioning Chaloner's name. Naturally, no evidence of harassment or doxing has been presented, although Reddit did state that the news articles written about Chaloner constituted the sharing of private information. The bot was intended to censor and suppress any discussion on Chaloner's background, but as it always is with the internet, this had the opposite effect. Chaloner and her controversies were suddenly exposed to a wider audience outside the UK, leading to further news articles and videos from influential content creators making people aware of her past. Due to public pressure, Reddit made the decision to fire Chaloner, claiming that their background checks weren't sufficient, and Chaloner herself made steps to remove herself from the internet, even going so far as to delete her blue checkmark certified Twitter account. Chaloner has now withdrawn almost entirely from the online sphere, something which she didn't carry out during any of the previous controversies she'd been a part of. Time will tell if she returns, but as her history suggests, she doesn't exactly know when to quit. Anyone who follows the exploits of trans rights activists is no doubt aware of the bizarre and at times downright disturbing characters the sphere attracts, but Amy Challoner is particularly notable for a number of reasons. Having a degenerate fetish is nothing unusual within the world of progressive activism. Many of the figures I've featured in previous installments have openly celebrated this aspect as a key part of their identity, and with pride parades regularly embracing fetishists as a keystone of their LGBT communities, this is only likely to spread. Admittedly, unlike Jessica in Eve in tampons or Stefanie in age play, Chaloner hasn't worn her fetish on her sleeve in quite the same way, although she's certainly been active online about it. But it is something that has clearly influenced the circle of those she's close to, and it feels more than a coincidence that Amy has an interest in adult babies, which is the same fetish David Chaloner expressed when he was sexually abusing a 10-year-old girl. It is also worth noting that Chaloner identified as a diaper fur at an incredibly young age, and at this time, she was regularly associating online with adults who are significantly older than her and she is still in close contact with them up to this day. It's not a stretch to suggest that Chaloner, being surrounded by such degeneracy, might see no potential safeguarding issues that might arise from her being in close association with such morally questionable people. But another question needs to be asked from this. 
Are these the people you want to be representatives of the trans community? Trans people have regularly been labelled as fetishists regardless of whether they're involved in an alternative lifestyle or not. If we're to have someone speak to the media or even parliament on behalf of our issues, do we want it to be someone who gets their kicks from wearing diapers and soiling themselves? One may try and argue this is a private matter, but as I've shown, these are sentiments Chaloner has hardly kept hidden, and she's far from the only one. Sophie LaBelle, the creator of embarrassing webcomic assigned male, also recently came out as a diaper fur, and was found to have created fetish art based on photos of real children. LaBelle is also an activist held in high regard with progressives. A line must be drawn here. But what's even more significant than Chaloner's moral degeneracy is how she has been empowered by progressivism and intersectionality to weaponize her different identities as a way to avoid any responsibility for her actions. This is most clear when she quit the Green Party during an investigation into her behavior, declaring the party to be infected with transphobia. This successfully got trans activists back on her side, effectively ignoring the clear safeguarding issue of hiring a paedophile to lead an election campaign in favor of fighting transphobia. This got to the point where the issue was consistently sidelined when she was mentioned in public, because the narrative of trans activism was deemed more important. Now again, Chaloner is not the only example of where this principle has been applied. Take the story of former NUS trans officer Jess Bradley, an avowed communist who was caught uploading pictures of themselves masturbating at work. Despite the clear inappropriateness of their actions, the threat of TERFs was deemed to be more significant than Bradley's actions, and the stonewalling of any questions from outsiders kept the issue buried. And then there's the situation with Reddit, which has been eager to remove right-leaning and conservative content from their website, but as they clearly demonstrated, it was also their policy to protect a degenerate like Chaloner from any criticism, only backing down once external pressure made the position untenable. And that's why Chandler can be considered a pillar of the community. She has openly embraced deviance, which has a clear impact on her world outlook. She has weaponized her trans identity to deflect criticism, and large social media platforms have risked their own reputation just to protect her. Chaloner's history has shown time and time again there are little repercussions for behaviour that would have ended any other person's career, but the shield of trans identity is often underestimated. And for a minority group that claims to have no influential power, it seems strange how Chaloner has repeatedly used her identity for political clout. Amy Chaloner is currently in hiding, and it's only a matter of time before her triumphant return. I'll be sure to watch it when it happens, but until then, demand better from your self-appointed representatives, because Amy Chaloner will not be the last of her kind.